You wish to consult me? A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? It would have been better for us had she embraced Shah and claimed the power of the goddess. But it is better for Shadowheart to be free of that poisonous influence. The Night Singer has some admirable qualities, far more than her insipid sister. But her followers are repressed. Take the child, Shadowheart. She does not even know who she is, but still manages to pity herself. The very concept of Sharon worship is self-indulgent. They would have you think every whispered word and hidden thought is of value, but it is not so. I have performed a thousand interrogations, squeezing out the most guarded secrets held in heart, mind, and soul. I can tell you this. When the trivial parts have been whittled away and I have sifted through what remains, in most cases, a person amounts to nothing at all. I have encountered few Githyanki in my life. Those that I did were raiders. They croaked out pleas for mercy in their alien tongue as they died. Meeting Lazelle makes me wish I knew more of their culture. Whatever culture you and I once shared, it no longer has a hold on me, Lothsworn. You still listen to the whispers of the Spider Queen's web. I only obey my own heart's desires. Most Gith do not seem to know their own hearts, nor do they need to. They have strict hierarchies and commitment to a single cause. Some, like Lazelle, question that cause. But even so, she retains the discipline of her training. The wizard? No. Their mastery of the weave is commendable, but they are poor conversationalists. In my experience, they do not usually live long enough to make the effort of befriending them worthwhile. Either the enemy recognizes they are a threat and kills them swiftly, or their curiosity leads them to combust while experimenting with the limits of magic. Our wizard is already in a state of suspended combustion, thanks to that orb between his ribs. <laughs> I suspect it is only a matter of time before he goes up in smoke. I will reserve my social graces for those who might live long enough to appreciate them. I have never known anyone so ferocious and unassailable in battle, and yet so fragile and impermanent in their very being. I often think of mortality as a curse. In time, all that I am and all that I have known and learned will be lost. In time, our cities will be dust. Karlak does not seem to have such anxieties. Perhaps because she cannot afford to. She exists in the moment and she will burn out and be gone in a moment. <sighs> there is something very beautiful about that. She is intelligent, strong, and capable as both a leader and a fighter. An impressive woman. It is a shame that she devotes all of her talents and experience to the futile cause of the Harpers. Their devotion to preserving balance is pathetic. Precisely. Preservation and balance are an excuse for inaction and stagnation. There are organizations like the Harpers in every realm and every culture. I despise all of them. They fear change and would rather maintain mediocrity than face the risks and challenges that progress demands. I would rather break the world and build it anew than be satisfied with its imperfections. 
He would despise me if he had the wits to understand me. But as long as he believes we have a common cause, he does not see beyond that. <laughs> I enjoy his simplicity. Olof, help me. Sometimes I almost envy it. I am not so sure. As we saw when he acted as the Stone Lord, Minsk is a dangerous tool. <sighs> a powerful weapon without a mind to guide it. His righteous rage has been directed at my people in the past, and it can be as brutal and merciless as any act committed by the Drow. Fortunately, for now, he punches wherever we point, and serves our needs well. 